Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tanisha and I hope you stick around and subscribe. Today's video, we're gonna be talking all about money and specifically how I saved $50,000 by 25. I wanna put in a big disclaimer here. This is in no way to brag. I wanna talk about my money journey, share things that I was never taught. These are things that we should be taught in school, but unfortunately we're not. And fortunately some of us me included, have to learn the hard way. I feel like talking about money, we should be able to do freely and openly. I just wanna make talking about it a little less taboo. I know everyone's situation is different. With Miss Rona, it has really thrown a wrench in a lot of things. Just know that I am aware of that. Obviously have my own set of privileges when it comes to saving money. Just kinda of wanna level set also my specific money situation. I have a nine to five job. I do YouTube on the side. I have student loan debt, but right now it is deferred, which I'm like, thank you. I have no kids. I'm not married. I don't really have big money responsibilities. So all of those things kind of set me up to be able to save a little bit more maybe than like the average person. That's just a little background so you can kind of understand where I'm coming from and all of this. So how the hell did I do it? That's the whole reason why you're watching this video. First and foremost, there are steps that you have to take before even conquering this list. My first video really breaks down all the 10 actionable steps I took to save my first $10,000, definitely need a budget. Also shared my budget Excel doc. So if you're looking for some type of tracker to start budgeting and tracking your money, have a link in that video that you guys can check out. You can save it, create your own budget, put in your own items in there. Go check out that video. I will link it in the cards as well as down below. Just know that these are a little bit more advanced, reframing your mindset. And these steps are really just gonna propel you into saving a lot more. First thing that I did to save more money is I made more money and that is plain and simple. You're able to save a lot more when you make a lot more. I really tried to diversify my income. Like I said, I have a nine to five job. I also do YouTube, I'm also doing Instagram. I also create content for brands. My goal really was to have a lot of different streams of income. I know my situation is a little bit specific where I have a job and I also do like social media and stuff, but this can go to any type of situation. If you have one job, you can diversify your income by maybe picking up a part-time job, by maybe nannying. I nannied in college and also out of college. I graduated and I still did it for about, I think like two years. And I would just do it on nights when maybe I didn't have plans with friends or maybe I thought that I was just gonna come home and like watch Housewives. I would pick up a shift nannying. The mom would text me and say, hey, I need help. Just need you to help me be here and like watch them. I would do it. And I feel like putting your pride aside in those types of situations, I didn't have to do that. But I knew that I wanted to save more money you may pick up extra shifts or pick up an extra job maybe because you need the money but if you're in a situation where maybe you don't and you have the extra time put the ego aside you're able to save that money put it straight to savings that extra money is really going to help you because it's not coming out of your primary income it's just extra so if you can make extra you're obviously going to be able to save a lot more Next thing I did is I got rid of my car. This was completely circumstantial. I'm working from home ever since March of 2020. I really didn't need a car. I've had my car since I was, what, like 16, 17. It was a 2002 Dodge Neon. His name was Benji. I completely ran him to the ground. Mm. Ugh, that poor car. Passenger door did not work. I sold it to like a pick your part type thing, got $200 from it, which was nothing. I knew that since I'm working from home, I'm not really going anywhere. There was no reason for me to be paying insurance gas for a car that I wasn't really using. And it was costing me more money to get little things fixed. I had to get oil changes, a new alternator, things like that. I made the decision to just get rid of it. But I think that was one of the biggest things that really helped me save a lot because I wasn't spending money on expenses that I wasn't really needing. There's areas in your life where you feel like if you have a subscription that you're not really utilizing or you have something that's kind of just sitting there but you're still paying for it and get rid of it. Third thing that I did was completely lifestyle change but we started buying cheaper alcohol. You're buying, you know, $10 bottles of wine every single week. Like that's $60, $60 times four. So that's a lot. I will not buy Charles Shaw anymore. Two buck Chuck. I have graduated from that, I will not buy that. It like makes my stomach 
hurt just thinking about how I, how much I used to drink that. Mind you, I used to buy like seven bottles of Charles Shaw and like drink them like one every single night, but now I cannot. I still kind of subscribe to that same mentality where if I have a friend coming over, like I'm just gonna buy like something like easy from Trader Joe's. Maybe it costs five dollars, doesn't matter. If it's something a little bit nicer, special occasion, maybe I'll go to Ralph's and buy a ten dollar bottle. But alcohol is one of those things that you really don't think about until like you add it all up later it really does add up especially going out it costs so much money to buy a drink like it's ridiculous twenty dollars for a cocktail is like i love a good drink i love wine i love a cocktail knowing that i'm like that i have to really be intentional about where i'm spending my money if i know that i'm gonna want a glass of wine in the middle of the week i'm gonna buy the four dollar bottle finding areas where you can kind of cut back maybe buy that cheaper thing don't sacrifice on quality i feel like sometimes you know you spend less like on clothes let's say and it doesn't really last that long so you kind of are spending more money because you have to rebuy something but think of areas where maybe you can cut back on the price that you're spending on something if it's gonna do the same thing you know you're gonna get a little buzz and then you're gonna go to bed just buy the cheaper one fourth thing that I started doing is paying myself first anytime I get paid I try to automatically deduct at least $500 to some type of savings account whether it's my personal savings whether it's a high yield savings account my retirement stock market I barely started getting into that but I always try to pay myself first life happens and life is expensive bills we have rent we have phones we have Netflix subscriptions we have all of these things that we have to pay for and I feel like whenever we get a paycheck, it's like, well, there goes that, there goes that, there goes that, because you're always paying off something. You have to also remember to pay yourself. You work hard for your money and you deserve to save for a vacation. You deserve to save for a house. You deserve to save for a car or whatever. Just have maybe an emergency fund. We all deserve that. I feel like bills in life can kind of get in the way and we forget to, you know, also save for a rainy day. So I really try to be really mindful about saving and paying myself first. Sometimes it'll be more than that every month or sometimes it'll be less i don't go hard on myself if it's less because you know sometimes you know, i had a really busy month or i had a really crazy christmas buying presents for everyone and everyone like obviously you're going to save a little bit less the main goal is to save at least a little bit if you can save 200 dollars, if you can save 20 dollars, if you can save 10 it really doesn't matter the monetary amount it's more like the principle of getting used to every month putting something aside that is for you next way that i was able to save is taking advantage of lower rent opportunity that could look like living with your parents which I've said before in my last savings video that could look like living with a roommate LA is expensive you guys I don't know if you know about the rental market here it is insane rent is through the roof as much as maybe we would love to live alone or we would love to have our own room have our own apartment we would love to move out whatever the case may be sometimes it's more beneficial for you and for your bank account if you're really trying to save is to take advantage of paying less if my mom was close like when I just graduated college I would have totally lived with her like it saves you so much money such a stigma that I don't know society places on us if you're graduated it's like you're moving backwards living with your parents but honestly it is probably one of the smartest things you can do especially if they're not charging you rent if they do like they'll charge you a little bit I just feel like it's so much smarter on the flip side living with a roommate if you can split that rent in two instead of paying the full rent why would you not want to do that you can take that half of the rent that you would have paid living alone and save that put a uh, time on it so that you also don't get comfortable because at the end of the day you know eventually you're gonna have to grow up and live life you can't live with your parents forever and you also don't want to get used to paying a little bit for the rest of your life because life will kick you in the face it'll be really hard to adjust to going back to paying you know what everyone else is paying so maybe put a time frame on it I'm gonna live with my parents for a year I'm gonna live with a roommate for six months and then I'm gonna find my own place or I'm gonna move out not gonna be for Ever. it's just gonna be for a little bit so that you can save a little bit more money at a faster rate okay next thing that I did is live under my means just really avoiding lifestyle creep even as I got promotions and raises I have been at my nine-to-five job for about three and a half four years now which is 
crazy to even think about. Gotten promoted twice, gotten a few raises. Although my life is a little bit different, I'm able to travel more, I'm able to spend more on like experiences. What I really found has helped me save a lot more faster is living under my means. I know it's really easy when you get a little bit more money or when you get a promotion to feel like, okay, I'm gonna move into a different apartment. I'm gonna get a nicer car. I'm gonna get a nicer this. As you make more money, I feel like we inherently kind of roped into spending more as we make more. Being really conscious about that is really gonna help you save a lot. We chose to pick a two bedroom, one bath. We could have totally picked a two bedroom, two bath. That would have cost a little bit more. And over the span of us living here for a year, maybe we would have lost out on I don't know, $600. Although that's not a lot in the grand scheme of things, but think about saving $600 and just immediately putting that into your savings account. That is a big chunk of money. That's huge. So if you can find a situation where you're living under your means, even as you make more, because you know what? As you make more money and your lifestyle stays the same, there's gonna be a gap. And that gap of money that you're making that you're not shifting in any way. Of course, you're gonna go on a vacation or two. Of course, you're gonna go out to dinner a little bit more, but you're not shifting big things like red, new car, nicer car, those big things, those take up a lot of money. If you're keeping your lifestyle the same relatively and you're making more money, that gap of money that is not being spent on bigger things, you can put away into your savings. You can put away into a retirement. That is going to exponentially increase the amount of money that you're able to save. I know for me, where I live is really important, but I think you have to kind of determine what your non-negotiables and your negotiables are. For me, the non-negotiables were I wanted some type of updated appliances. I wanted a nice kitchen. Neighborhood is really important to me. I need to live in a nice area where I feel safe, especially as a woman. But there were obviously things things that I wanted that I didn't get in this apartment. I wanted some type of outside space because I eventually want a dog, but I didn't get that. There are things that I kind of had to let go of just to realize like, okay, do I really want to spend more money on that thing or can I live without it for now? And eventually when I save more and I save more and I feel more secure and stable in where I am financially, maybe in a year or two, we will upgrade and get one more bathroom or we'll get an outdoor space. But it's about, you know, determining what do I absolutely need to feel safe and feel comfortable and still feel like I can save. What that is, is what I have now. And in a year or two, when I have built up more money and I've built up my income and I'm still spending here at this level in a year or two when I'm up here then I can move up a level it's just really determining what do I absolutely need what do I not need what can I live without so that I can save for what my goals are number seven is huge and I feel like this is totally a mindset thing but it is delayed gratification this has saved me so much money i know it's not really like a tangible step but if you really think about it and think about decisions that you could have made in your life can really cost a lot of money you realize how much you save so for me i have always wanted a dog love dogs i love puppies like that is something that has been on my heart wanted forever if you guys watch the vlogs you guys know i fostered a dog that not only set me straight y'all fostering a puppy is no joke it opened my eyes because one i'm not ready for a puppy yet i think i need a lot more mental preparation for that dogs are a lot of money they're a lot of work i knew by fostering i would get a little bit of that experience taking care of a dog seeing what my life would be like with a dog seeing what the expenses are and if i were to have gotten a dog a year ago or two years ago or whatever i wouldn't have been able to do a lot of the things that i'm doing now I wouldn't have been able to save as much for sure because dogs are so expensive they're like little babies i know me as a dog mom my dog is getting best of the best it's getting toys every day it's getting treats it's like I know that when I get a dog I am going to be a spender I know now that like when I'm ready to get a dog I want to be in a financial position where I can really afford to give that dog the best life be the best dog mom that I know I want to be to it be able to afford everything that comes with the dog vet bills unexpected medical expenses you really never know finances that come with one are insane so really just like delaying that gratification and fulfilling that need of really wanting a dog and waiting that has saved me so much money also not buying luxury items i have been tiptoeing into it more so secondhand market i just bought some boots i know they're gonna last me a long time barely starting to spend now a little bit more on quality items but not buying luxury is huge the biggest 
not scam because I don't want to one day buy a luxury item and you guys come for me and send me this clip, but it is one of the things that takes so much money from you. Now the Chanel bags are $10,000? I'm sorry, what? Luxury in general, it costs so much. You can get nice quality things without feeling like you need to buy luxury items. Yes, I could have bought in, you know, a belt this or a bag that or a wallet this, like totally, but like then you just have your money sitting in your closet as opposed to sitting in a bank account in a savings account that's making you money. It's just sitting there and like, what does that really do? I'm only gonna spend so much. Me spending even like $400 on something or $300 on something, I like cringe, like I, I can't. So just imagine spending over a thousand dollars on one thing. I would never even wear it. I'd be so scared to wear it. Not spending on luxury has been huge for saving. I would also say saving for a more affordable car. I obviously don't have one right now. I'm still saving for one for the time comes when I do need one. Right now it's looking like I may not, so I may just ride it out. I have always kind of been on the certified pre-owned train. You can go in and buy a car brand new, right? That's obviously gonna cost you a lot of money. As soon as you drive off the lot, it depreciates. Cars are just depreciating assets in and of itself like it is what it is buying something that is a few years old but it is certified it's checked everything is good to go with it cutting down the depreciation because you're already buying something that is depreciated and you're not paying that full price for it I have always been on that train that was like what I was gonna do I think if you're in the situation where you need a car definitely look into used cars I know right now the prices of vehicles are insane it's it's just it's sad what's happening, so expensive. Right now, it may not even be worth it to do that, but if you can find a used car, it's a car. It doesn't have to be a piece of shit A to B, but like at the end of the day, cars are A to B, they get you somewhere, and if you can get something that's a few years old, you don't need the 2022 version. Just get something that's 2021, 2020 even. Who cares, it's the same car, same vehicle, not much has changed anyway, so just get a used one. <laughs> Last thing with delayed gratification is just waiting to buy things in general. I am a very impulsive shopper like when I see something and I love it I'm like click 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 purchase my credit card information is already in my computer It's like so easy for me to just purchase thing I think really waiting adding it to your car seeing after a few days if you still really like it then get it or Maybe even seeing after a few months if you're still thinking about it Then it's worth it to get it I've been trying to be really really mindful about like, okay I really really like this, but let me sleep on it. Let me take a day Let me see until Saturday if I really like it then I'll get it or save up for something like if you really have been wanting something if it's still gonna be there two months from now just wait on it and then get it a few months down or get it at the end of the month or whatever that time period is for you to wait most times we just see something we're like oh my god I want it and then a few days later we're like eh, I didn't really want that I, I could live without it if you give yourself that time to come to that conclusion you're gonna save yourself so much money so much space in your closet of just having things that you didn't really even really really want that so the eighth thing that has saved me a lot of money is using my credit cards to gain points for travel so that i don't have to spend money on airfare this is something that I've grown to learn i have been in credit card debt before it is not fun i learned a lot from being in credit card debt so now i only use credit cards responsibly I really was dumb with them especially in college so stupid with them <laughs> now immediately pay them off every single month sometimes i will do it before or it's due because I'm just so scared by being in debt. I just know what that felt like and what that did to my finances. Don't put myself in that situation anymore. But now I use them for my advantage. I can spend on this credit card and I get points for it or I get miles, I'm gonna do that. I put all my purchases on my credit card, I pay it off, but what happens is I get miles for airfare. So we're planning a trip hopefully in the later part of this year to go somewhere in Europe. I am gonna be able to go on that trip completely from miles. That is like one of the smartest things that you can do. It's gonna save you so much money because a trip to Europe is really expensive. Airfare is really expensive in general. So if you can spend on everyday purchases on your credit card, you're buying groceries, you're paying a bill or whatever, and you're paying it off and then you get miles from it, why wouldn't you do that? A flight that could have cost you a thousand dollars to Europe, you use your miles and you spend maybe a hundred or you spend zero because you have all these points accumulated. Number nine is investing and contributing 
contributing to my Roth IRA, contributing to my high yield savings account, something that I definitely did not learn in school. I kind of had to learn from Tyler and doing research. Investing your money is gonna save you from like inflation. You're at a place where, okay, like you have an emergency fund. If anything goes wrong, you can use that. Now you wanna kind of diversify where your money is. Investing is one of the best things that you can do. It's making you money without you having to really do anything. I so much am not that smart when it comes to like the stock market. I don't really know what I'm doing there. I barely have started dipping my toe into that world. Really contributing to my Roth IRA, I have seen a return on that already and I don't even have that much in there investing your money so that it can make you more money is going to make you more money like you really don't have to do much you just put it there and then you get a return on it sometimes in like regular bank accounts savings accounts they don't really give you that much like you get pennies but when you invest it in a stock market retirement account it's gonna grow so much more because the return is bigger the last thing that has really helped me save money and this is for all my fashion lovers is shopping less and outfit repeat repeating more. You guys know channel, like follow me on Instagram. You guys know I love fashion, I love clothes, I love styling things. Sometimes I get roped into the trends. Oh, this sale, this, 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 that. I really have had to take a step back, especially as of lately, like the past maybe year and a half to really think of, okay, I wanna invest in pieces that I know I can rewear a lot. Basics for me and closet staples that I can wear so many different ways is huge. Not spending money on, okay, I'm buying this trend that's gonna be in just for the next few months and then the next few months I have to buy this other top that is only going to be in for this month and then the next month I have to, like you see how the cycle just kind of spirals and spirals I'm buying a staple oversized blazer jeans that really fit me ask me to style a blazer in 20 ways I can do it like that those type of things and just actually using what you have in your closet and buying things intentionally knowing that okay I can wear this like 10 ways even if it's three ways or two ways I'm buying buying this because I know it's gonna last a long time, it's good quality, I'm gonna have this for years. You're gonna inherently shop a lot less. You buy clothes to wear them. Like you don't just buy something to only wear it once. You buy it so that you can wear it again and again and it can become hopefully a staple in your closet. Sometimes I will wear something and if it didn't get enough light of day, I will wear it again and it doesn't really matter. No one really cares if you wear an outfit again. Literally no one cares. Invest in staple pieces that you're gonna wear all of the time. You will find that you're gonna be shopping a lot less. All right, those are the 10 ways I was able to save $50,000 by 25. Cannot believe I'm even saying that. It is just so crazy and surreal. I do not come from money. Follow my channel, you know that. I have worked very hard for everything that I have. To be even at this position at 25 years old is insane. Again, this is in no way me bragging. I'm not trying to show off. I just feel like talking about money, so taboo, we don't talk about it. That is why we are in situations that we're in. That is why some people get into debt because we're not taught these things in school. We're not taught finances. Like that is not something that I was ever taught. That is why I had to go through a lot of hard things, especially when it came to money. But I would not trade those hard things for the world because now I'm in the position that I'm in because I went through those really, really hard times and I hope you don't go through that and if you do, I hope you're able to get out of it. I hope this video taught you something, whether it's small, big. Let me know if you guys have any tips when it comes to saving, investing. I would love to hear. I'm always willing to learn. Obviously, I am not done in my money journey. Definitely leave any tips that you have down below. Share and help us all. Let me know if you guys like money content. I would love to make more videos on this again I'm not a professional I'm just sharing kind of my experience with it so that's kind of the angle that we're at here we're all in the same boat we're just just figuring out money and life together so I hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure you're subscribed if you're not already again if you want to check out that 10k video for more like actionable steps you want to check out my budget tracker I have a link to the Excel doc that I used to use so go check out that video and I will see you guys in the next one Bye.